Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin says he will self-quarantine for 14 days after coming into contact with a cabinet minister who tested positive for COVID-19. However, he says this will not interrupt government business. The PM will continue to work from home and use video conferencing to conduct meetings. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department for Religious Affairs, Datuk Sri Dr. Zulkifli Muhammad Al-Bakri, has tested positive for COVID-19 and is now undergoing treatment. He had attended a National Security Council meeting chaired by Muhyiddin last Saturday and now all those identified as close contacts have been issued a 14-day home surveillance order starting October 3rd and have been ordered to wear surveillance bracelets. This comes as Malaysia reports a new all-time high in terms of daily new COVID-19 infections with 432 cases. Of the total, 429 are local transmissions. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noh Hisham Abdullah says Kedah and Sabah top the list for the highest numbers of new cases with 241 cases from Kedah and 130 from Sabah. The total number of infections now stands at 12,813. Meanwhile, 57 people were discharged today, bringing the number of recoveries to 10,340. There were no new deaths. UEM Sunrise is proposing to merge with EcoWorld Development Group, confirming a report by The Age over the weekend. In a letter proposing the merger, UEM Sunrise's parent company UEM Group asked the two developers to consider the merits of such a move and to begin negotiations. It said there is a pressing need for industry players to consolidate resources and capabilities given subdued macroeconomic conditions and market headwinds. The proposed merger is to be carried out via an exchange of shares and warrants in EcoWorld for new shares and warrants in UEM Sunrise. The new shares will be issued at a proposed 44.3 cent each at an exchange price of 46.9 cent apiece. If this goes through, EcoWorld will become a wholly owned subsidiary of UEM Sunrise and be subsequently delisted. After the merger, Kazana National, through UEM Group, will remain the single largest shareholder of UEM Sunrise as well as EcoWorld on a collective basis. EcoWorld Executive Chairman Tan Sri Liu Kisin will have a 3.6% stake in UEM Sunrise, while his son and Executive Director Liu Tian Xiong will hold 2.8%. AirAsia Group announced today that its associate, AirAsia Japan Co., is ceasing operations due to highly challenging operating conditions. In a statement to the stock exchange, the carrier said it has been notified of its associate's decision to shut operations, a move that would reduce its cash burden. The announcement comes amid reports that AirAsia may also close its affiliate operations in India. According to Bloomberg, local aviation minister Hardeep Singh Puri said over the weekend that AirAsia's shop is anyway shutting down and that their parent company has problems. His office later suggested the comment was taken out of context. Separately, the Times of India reported today that Tata Sons, which owns 51% of AirAsia India, is in talks to buy out the remaining 49% held by AirAsia. Citing a source, the newspaper said Tata Sons is reviewing its joint venture with AirAsia as the group is reluctant to inject fresh equity into its Indian affiliate and instead wants it to take on debt to continue operating. Malaysia's debt levels are set to rise as a result of the slew of economic stimulus packages announced by the government amid the COVID-19 pandemic. In an interview with CNBC, Finance Minister Tanku Datuk Sri Zafrul Aziz said fiscal deficit is expected to increase to about 5.8% to 6% this year. Fiscal injections currently stand at about 20% of GDP, while debt-to-GDP ratio is around 53%. Back in August, the parliament agreed to allow the government to borrow up to 60% of its GDP as part of temporary measures to ease the impact of the outbreak on businesses and citizens. So far, Putrajaya has rolled out about 305 billion ringgit in stimulus packages, with the most recent being the 10 billion ringgit Prihatin Supplementary Initiative Package. The government is optimistic that next year, the economy will expand by about 5.5% to 8% from negative growth of between 3.5% and 5.5% this year.
the Securities Commission Malaysia says funds raised by alternative fundraising channels have surpassed 1 billion ringgit so far this year. Chairman Datuk Syed Zaid Alba says this alternative avenue such as equity crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer platforms have benefited over 2,500 small and medium enterprises. Investors below the age of 35 accounted for 60% of individual investors on these platforms, with retail investors making up 84% of participating investors. Despite the challenging environment, Said Zaid notes it is encouraging that investors have continued to show confidence in the Malaysian capital markets. This year, the SC has issued three more digital investment management licenses, bringing the total to seven. These digital investment managers have attracted many first-time investors with close to 90,000 new accounts opened this year. The demand for online brokerage services is also on the rise, with new account openings through online-only brokers surging over 270% year-on-year. However, Said Zaid also warns of the risks that come with increased technology adoption and says the SC will continue to enhance the market's cyber resilience.